Hmm. Good evening. It has been a while. Why does it do that? That's weird. It's just like just giving up halfway through the rendering. That's what I want to find out. Okay. It's going to be a fairly short stream anyway. Let's do a bit of bug fixing. There's that stuff, but that wouldn't do it. But then... What else would it be? Most likely, we don't hit this case. Although it's not just that, it's like it's giving up on everything for this. Let's try that and just see what breaks, because something will. Yeah. Um. I mean, this should never happen because there'll be collisions detection going on, so you'd never actually clip into the wall like this. But it's really weird that it's only rendering half of the display. So I guess you're like right on that line. Yeah, because it's like there. 
guess. Because uh, I'm obviously borrowing a lot of code. I guess the challenge is just mapping this stuff. I guess what they're saying is that we can actually change this out and that this would be side distance.x is equal to 1 over ray. Is that right? Ray direction dot. But dot one is equal to zero one e thirteen. Otherwise you do that. And that could be horribly wrong, but we'll find out. It'll be fun. Yeah, look at that. That's not good. And it still does weird things on that corner, so clearly that wasn't the answer. It's probably best not to use this anyway. We're so far removed from this original code at this point. Because we're doing this bit, which is... Okay, so let me, let me read it properly. Um,
because we're doing this next bit here, you see? So, minus one, our position minus the map position. So the delta dist is the side distance. Um, nope. Good to remember that. Um, I guess this just assumes that it's never zero. doesn't fix it. Okay. This stuff hurts my brain occasionally. Uh, delta dist. Nope, not that one, because that won't work. Yeah. Hello, Ruby. Mm. 
It's that that bugs me. And it's like it, it shouldn't really, but... There's lots of little, like, visual glitches that happen when I'm moving around. Let's see if I can catch one. Oh, I saw one for a moment there, but... I don't know, it just doesn't always... Ah, oh, there we go, there! Exactly there, this thing. And I have no idea why it does it. But, to be honest, that's probably what I get for porting some code from C to Ren and back again. So... It would be probably better if I did this all from first principle, so I fully understand it again. It's been a while. <laughs> but it looks good. At least I think it does. I've got my two sprites, which are properly sorted. Yeah, I mean it is. It's, it's definitely not calculating that correctly. I just... I don't know why that it why it isn't. Um, yeah, catching it though is difficult. Enjoy. That can't be right. It must be doing something strange computation-wise, because that's just not right. But it does look like it's rendering very smoothly, which is very nice. And it's got the, like, thin walls, I call them. So you can have this wall, which just um, only takes up, like, that line, so you can still kind of get close to it. Or at least it looks more interesting, I guess. And then you've got the doors, which are the same, but open and close. Which is pretty nice. Um, there's just... The occasional visual glitches now. I'm not getting the memory corruption stuff. Knock on wood. Um, so I'm probably ready to start hooking this up to an actual game system. Because, yeah, the way that it's sort of architected means that the this is just a renderer so you need to specify specifically what needs to be on screen and it will draw it but there's nothing orchestrating that right now so i need the game code to handle the logic and to push in stuff so at the moment these are hard coded in which isn't ideal and it'll be good to change that 
So that'll probably be work what I am working on in future streams. Looks pretty good though. You can also specify um, the floor and ceiling and wall tiles for individual tiles, which is useful. Um, and in theory, you could change the texture of different walls and floors and stuff to animate them. But I've not done that yet, because that again has to be controlled from the game logic side, I think, rather than from the renderer directly. So, yeah. Hmm. I'm still like figuring out the API I want to use though. Uh, uh, uh. That's a fun one. You wouldn't see that once you're not able to clip into the wall, but... So I wouldn't expect any problems with that. Same thing with that one, it'll be there behaving the same way. And I guess... The larger the area, the more graphically intensive this would be, but it's still gonna handle fairly smoothly, I reckon. Um, so I feel pretty good about it. At any rate, it's better than the engine as it was last year. I just need to hook up all of that code again. Or maybe try and hook it into parcel. And go from scratch, that might be better. Although, yeah, I've not used Parcel for real time stuff for a while. So that'll be interesting. Hmm. Tricky. Very tricky. Let's do a bit of real coding for a bit. Um, just a tiny bit. I want to be able to say, give me an, uh, like, add an object and remove an object, I guess, and modify an object. So, At the moment, there's only two objects, so there's, like, how, how do you tell it? Uh, let's go the other way. Around, around, around. So you want to do something like from, um, create object. Or I guess it would be like push object, maybe. Uh, 
and the object is at this position and this texture. Because I think that's all we have. Mm. Oh yeah, I suppose there is a um, Well, actually that arch direction isn't needed. That doesn't matter for the renderer. And then these, I guess, do, but we're not gonna use them straight away. You could modify that afterwards. Um, These should probably just be set camera, but maybe not. Um, So strictly speaking, it would be like that. I guess. We could actually do the same thing here, so I don't have to do this bit. This, this, this bit of API is not good yet, by any means. Because then you could have the um, uh, text ID. Well, and. Asset position. The div and the move, which probably need better names, but meh. It's not using a T-line type thing at the moment. This is still running in a DLL as a plugin, um, doing the entire ray casting, but all in there. Um, I probably will implement the T-line version uh, sooner than later, though. Because I do want to see how that performs in comparison. Mm. 
Yeah, I agree. I didn't know that the Pico 8 had the T-line thing until you pointed it out, so... Although, I need to have a look at how it works, and I don't think I'd want to replicate the API the exact way that it is, which might confuse some people, but... I want to do something similar, at least. That's the idea, right? Like, you, you have a line, you map across it. Maybe I'll do that later in the week as well. I think that's okay. Yeah, but I actually don't... I need to think this through a bit more. Because I basically need to give everything an ID. I can't just... Wait, that's great. I suppose you've been quite busy, so it's understandable. But... Getting the GitHub, GitHub Actions stuff working is good, though. Makes the things a bit easier. Yeah, that's a, that's really exciting. Must be a lot to do to get to that point where you have to hand everything over, though. <laughs> oh, that's strange. Render a bit in. I'm not liking that. This is this is yeah not easy to do. Because for that to work, the reference then has to hold on to a copy, a handle to the renderer. Which means the renderer no. I mean, the renderer shouldn't be getting um, unloaded, but you want to make sure that if it gets moved around in memory, you can get back to it. So that's risky. the alternative is that you don't hold on to it in the renderer but you basically have all the paths of code go through the renderer itself I'm not sure how I feel about that did I not I must have done something similar to this for the audio engine what did I do for the audio engine So 
So you get the system channel. Okay. I think this is actually in the dome. Yeah. So the, yeah, this is holding on to a static pointer to the engine rather than the ren instance because i mean there isn't a ren instance for the audio engine so you know, it just works that way but it's different here so i suppose it's not the end of the world Like that. Oh, that's an annoying thing for a debugger to do. I wonder why. Ah, uh, okay. Slot farm VM one. I guess it would actually be like that in the end. I 
Oh no, 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 no. That's 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 um, after we haven't done that yet. Uh, Uh, that's obviously not right. VM two like that. No, oh, fair enough though. I mean, it would be lovely at some point when it's working again to have a debugger. It is a little bit annoying to debug things without, but it's not the end of the world. So hopefully that. I mean, it, it'll be good when it happens. I think. Nice. Everything isolated is good. Hmm, <laughs> that's true. I suppose it's all a bit tangled up at the moment, so. Or it has been. Uh... I can just collapse these, I don't need to do that separately. Start with that at least. And it'll need a um, set position at some point. But before that, we need a create object thing. Mostly documenting and clarifying how it works. The VS Code side is agnostic, but has a VM side requirement for asking for source. Okay. Oh, it's a VS Code extension. I didn't, that didn't click for me. Mm -hmm. That means I'd have to actually use VS Code to debug stuff, though. Which is... Hmm. And edit things, maybe? I don't know. Oh, no, I actually want both. Ah, well, if it's a TCP API, that's not so bad. Right. But it means that other people could build their own front end to it if they wanted. Which is good. That's good. I guess you just call it Rendy or something. I don't know. Problem is, I, I <laughs> I'm editing in the command line, so to me, a VS Code plugin doesn't help much. But <laughs> for the other people, it's a good thing because not everyone is like me. Uh, push object. Oh, that's actually a uh, run VM thing. Right. 
and then we'll have to return void as a result. We can do, oh, no, we don't want that one. Uh, renderer, star renderer. Let's go to ren. Uh, get slot foreign vm zero. Like that. And then I've actually got this whole chunk of code. Uh, I actually don't know. I've never used Vim to do debugging stuff, so I don't know if it has any built-in things. There, if if not, there is probably someone who's written a plugin for it. Um, I should really look into that. It would make this a bit more smooth. Although maybe I should just switch to using VS Code. If, if there's sufficient language support that it can do auto-completion and things, although I think you were saying that auto-completion is dependent on the host because every Ren VM implementation is going to resolve modules and stuff differently, so... Eh. But, hey. So push object, how am I receiving the position here? Because that's not good. That needs to be x, y, like that. Yeah. This will be a uint text ID. Oh, nice. We just got jump to definition working, so pressing key. That's that's quite handy. That is something I do miss uh, working in this environment because most of my day job is in IntelliJ, which has the same thing. So yeah, especially if you're working in established projects, being able to jump back and forth to where things are defined is really helpful. So I, I agree with that, it's really good. Uh, oh, oh, oh. There we go. I think I want that with spaces. <sighs> That pushes that on there. And then I need to do Vim Spectre. Let me have a look at what that is. Multi-language graphical debugger for Vim. Well, that's handy and terrifying. to install that and play with it when I'm not streaming with things. I wonder if it'll play well, like if it's like a separate mode or something. Oh, that's very cool. If it works with any VS Code stuff. 
I'm just wondering if like my existing Vim config will mess with that at all, or if it's like a whole distinct piece. Hmm, very cool. Yeah, I'll definitely look at that in a bit. Um, oh, I need to have like an ID counter thing. Well, it could just be next ID, and then we just always increment it for everything. Well, if I'm doing that, then this should probably be a 64. No, oh, I don't know. Is it? Am I that likely to overflow? I don't know. Hmm, <laughs> unlikely. Well, it depends. If you like push a million textures, no, not like a million, I don't know, probably not, you're right, you're probably not. Um, strange. Um, okay. Uh, sprite delayed he is equal to renderer dot next id plus plus. And then run. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt, does it? Slot double VM zero sprite.id. Because then I guess you're functionally guaranteed not to run out. Whatever. <laughs> um, okay, so just to double check that this works, I can do over here in the test file. Raycaster dot push object. Um, twelve, twelve, ID of nine, and twelve, five, ID of nine. Uh, and then this can all go away. I wasn't expecting that to just compile. That's more like it. What I okay, so what what I what I need really is something to um, sanity check whether ren files are actually going to compile uh, syntax correct or not. That's a thing I would like. Although this sort of thing is actually not going to happen without runtime error stuff, so... 
I wouldn't expect it to catch this, but it was something I was thinking about generally. Oh, it's because of this thing that I've not done yet. And that's now three arguments, not two. Why? Well, it looks like it worked. Then I got my second one. Uh, oh, the sorting is wrong. What the? That was working earlier. Uh, but it's only wrong in one direction. Sorting now. That's not good. That should be better. But it's still putting that one first. But not on both sides, which is weird. Because they're not the same anymore. So, what's going on? That bit hasn't changed. That's just bad formatting.
Still doing that. Uh, so F percent F versus percent F percent F. Just do it as um, AVX, AVY, BVX, BVY. Like that. And F percent F for the final set, which would be renderer position dot X renderer position dot Y. So we look at them like this. And they've got the same value, so that's not good. Uh, SP push. Pretty sure that the objects, yeah, they're V two, so they should allow for doubles. So it's um. Maybe it's just not adding things correctly. These stretchy buffers are not really worth it. Saying that most likely is my fault, so. I mean, it thinks there's two things in there, so it shouldn't be Why does it think that they are in the same... That's not right. So they're not the same, but the values are the same. 
Am I just not passing them incorrectly? Because that could be it. X, Y, text, ID, X, Y, text, ID. from here. so weird. Because they, um, uh, like that. Oh, no, the F's, the F's, but yes. Why? Because it could just be passing them in wrong. I forgot about that bit. No, they definitely passed in different. I've just deleted everything. Bugger. Oh, that's really bad. Um, there's no way of coming back from that, is there? I mean, I have Git, so I can go back to the start of the stream, but deleting a whole hour's worth of progress is not fun. Ouch. I need like a soft RM, just in case that sort of thing happens. commit that and then come back to it when I'm a little bit less sleepy. Uh, yeah, this has been the stream for the day, I think. Just a little short test thing to get in the habit of it again.
I might be streaming tomorrow. We'll see. Um, but yeah. Hope it's been vaguely interesting. Oh, that's an annoying way to end a stream though, because I shouldn't be deleting files like that. Hey. <laughs> I'm about to finish for the day, having deleted the hour's worth of work. <laughs> it's fine, it happens. Mm. Yeah, I know. Just this being careless thing here. I don't even know why that's in my history, you know? No, well, the file was in Git, but not all of the changes for the last hour. So I'm back to where I was at the start of the stream. Which is here. No. Either way, I've done too many other operations now, so I imagine I would have lost things. But it's fine, it happens. This was more of an ex experimental and exploratory thing anyway. I've got a better idea of what I want to do now. So it's not the end of the world. It happens. It wasn't anything critical or particularly laborious, so... And it also wasn't fully working, so... Approaching it again when I'm more awake is not a bad thing. <laughs> Anyway, I hope that you have a nice evening, end of your Sunday. Uh, I'm probably about to go to bed, so. <laughs> yeah, I should be streaming hopefully tomorrow, we'll see. But it's always good to hang out. Um, yeah. Will do, you too. Have a good one. <laughs>